Dr. Scott. I'm Eugenie Scott, Director of the National Center for Science Education in Oakland, California. The parents, scientists, and teachers belonging to NCSE support the teaching of evolution in the public schools. Thank you for letting me speak today about the science teaks and specifically process skill C3A, a critical thinking standard. The proposed wording requires students to, quote, analyze and evaluate scientific explanations using empirical evidence, logical reasoning, and experimental and observational testing. This makes C3A a superior critical thinking standard, expressing clearly how scientists actually evaluate and test explanations. It clarifies for teachers the elements of critical inquiry, evidence, logical reasoning, and experimental and observational testing. And by abandoning the inaccurate strengths and weaknesses language, this phrasing does not encourage the singling out of evolution for special treatment, as occurred in 2003 when textbook publishers were threatened with having to introduce non-existent weaknesses of evolution. I have a copy of NCSE's Voices for Evolution for each of you containing statements by science, education, and industry organizations attesting that evolution is central to science you will find mainstream scientists and educators offer no support for teaching weaknesses of evolution. When claims are made that there are a list of weaknesses that should be taught, I suggest you begin by considering the sources. During the November 2008 board meeting, this is Dunbar relying on an article in the September 2008 newsletter of the Institute for Creation Research, suggested that the research of a Nobel laureate, Dr. Werner Arbor, would provide weaknesses of evolution that could be studied by Texas students. I corresponded with Dr. Arbor, who wrote me, quote, I am neither a Darwin skeptic nor an intelligent design supporter, as is claimed in Bergman's article. I stand fully behind the neo-Darwinian theory of biological evolution. You have Dr. Arbor's letter with my written testimony. This, of course, is only one of many examples of false and misleading information that emanates from creationist sources. If you are considering comparing the reliability of a creationist source to the National Academy of Sciences, there is no contest. If the science teaks require textbook publishers to include a lot of creationist-inspired nonsense, Texas students will be at a disadvantage. In this age of modular publishing, a publisher might well present an inferior Texas edition with phony weaknesses of evolution and a national edition containing accepted science. You'll be teaching the equivalent that Grant surrendered to Lee after the Civil War while everyone else in the country learns accurate history. I don't think you want to disadvantage Texas students in competing for science-related jobs. And think of how betrayed Texas students attending a Texas or out-of-state university will feel when they find out that their high school <coughs> science classes were filled with misinformation. That's unfair to them. So please listen to the scientists who tell you to accept the current draft with pedagogically superior wording for the critical thinking standard C3A and which avoids the potential to miseducate Texas students. <coughs> 